How do you imagine Saudi Arabia? Just flat and sandy? Let us challenge that. Saudi Arabia was close to tourism until very recently, which means that everything that we can experience right now stayed pretty untouched comparing to any other country in the Middle East. After already one week in the country, we are mind blown by the hospitality of the people and the impressive great outdoors. We are trying to get again to the edge of the world. Um, this time we are taking another route and just their track we, we saw in the, in the maps. Let's see if it's going to bring us there. For the moment it looks easy, so everything flat, but we'll see if it gets more complicated later. We just need to do it before sunset because this is always a struggle. We start very late. Hopefully we are there for sunset. Sunset right now is really early, so 5.30 it's already sundown, so yeah, we don't have much time left in the day to do a lot of things. Edge of the World is part of a 800 km long escarpment called Tubaik. These 300 meter cliffs were formed when the Red Sea spread apart and the Arabian plate shifted east, pushing and creating this incredible scenery. This whole area was an ancient ocean bed. And now, standing on top of the cliffs, looking at the horizon, it really feels we are at the edge of the world. This is a famous spot in Saudi Arabia, so normally people gather for sunset. But the next morning we had the place for ourselves. And it was absolutely magical. It's around 7.30 in the morning. We woke up really early, just at uh, sunrise, to see the, yeah, all the edge of the world, like with the nice lighting. It's just unreal to, to be here alone. Um, we're just having some coffee and chilling here with a great view. We were in the workshop yesterday um, and uh, yeah, did the oil change, 
also rotate their tires and repair the mount, which was great, was really efficient. But we still need uh, to do to repair some things, like including the door that it was already a little bit broken, but yesterday it just completely broke and we were unable to open it from the inside or from the outside. Um, so yeah, Kai is trying to repair it. This door is already like a mess. And um, yeah, luckily we have a door handle, but maybe there are more problems that need to be solved. <laughs> it's the right one. Mm -hmm. The screw is completely broken, I cannot get it off. Clean start. That's how they break every time you remove them. In general, our doors are in a really bad condition. Yeah. Probably the best one. <laughs> and this is the best one. And that's the leftovers of the old one. So that part is broken, that is broken. It's good to have the spare parts for those. Important when you are like on the on the road and you are constantly opening and closing doors like we do. Putting everything back together. Just replaced the bolt from the panhard road. We couldn't find the right one in Iran. We just got a 5.6 and we needed an 8.8 .8, so i replaced that that's the old one it looks better than i thought but yeah i feel safer with the proper one We left edge of the world and headed south. It got late again, so we decided to stay south of Riyadh. Even around an 8 million people city like Riyadh, one can stay in beautiful spots in nature, like these buried red sand dunes. stayed in the so-called red sand dunes. We couldn't get in too far because we are pretty heavy and the sand is super soft and yeah where we were there was sadly everything full of rubbish from locals doing picnics and so yeah that's how it is. We are going now uh, towards the south towards Abba. We will not make it today 
um, and we will stop on the way just a place that we find maybe with some shadow so we can stay longer or spend one day at the place. thoughts or like first impressions we got from Saudi after a week um, people in general are really really friendly uh, when it comes to us uh, yeah. everyone says hello everyone says like welcome to Saudi uh, everyone wants to know where we are from constantly um, yeah Constantly. constantly also like on the road people drive next to you uh, with the window open and like uh, invite you or um, and just say hello and welcome yeah. it's really nice uh, it makes it a pleasant experience yeah. but on the other hand was uh, shocking mm. to see how uh, the local people uh, treat the workers like at the petrol station or supermarket supermarkets or so like, yes you feel like uh, they are like two worlds the world of the one that needs to be served and the people that actually serve you and yeah. it's a very clear there's a very clear line and foreigners are closer to the ones to be served because we are guests yeah. other than that it's like what happens all the time which is kind of odd and makes you feel like you're like a rare animal <laughs> uh, that like people come to you and ask you if they can take a picture and then they're taking like a video uh, of like the car and then you um, of say us. hi yeah. and it's like they always expect hi. That, that you hi. say something um, yeah. yeah thank you we love we love it here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, just a situation like that. Yeah, exactly um, like that. Yeah, like they, they take a video of you and expect you to to say hello or like say something and then they just turn away and drive off. Yeah. Everyday life is Instagram life. Everything is connected. Um, yeah, you are content just there, so you just need to record it and put it online, so yeah, shocking things for this week, we don't know, maybe next week we have other things to to say. Yeah. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it caught up really late, we were really relaxed on the grass, but we need to leave because we still have I think, two hours to go, so let's go. just said that he's going to get a jacket unbelievable we didn't wear a jacket for a very long time so. he's trying to find home he's like the same color as the sand super look at the tail <gasps> so cute oh my god I'm so sorry we just parked on top of his cave of his house and we may have like destroyed the entrance or so. Where are the chances? So the mouse rebuilt his house. That's good to know. And the oats that we put for him are gone. So I guess maybe we are in peace. But you can see all those lines. On the floor, those are from his tail. 
leaves all those traces, so you can see where he was. This whole area had an African vibe and we decided to stay one more night at this place. Chill, edit and of course repair more stuff. The number plate was always loose so I attached it because we heard that uh, number plates are a nice souvenir for some locals that are not totally honest. Feta cheese with veggies. Different colors, chocolate, vanilla and mocha. where we stayed for two days uh, it was nice and now we're heading more southwest towards Abba and uh, yeah we will not make it today it's an eight hour drive distances are way longer here than they look on the map so we need to find a camp spot in between and then tomorrow drive further to the west towards the Red Sea. We are doing a lot of kilometers every day. We are taking the most eastern road. East of us is just the Rupal Kali Desert, also known as the Empty Quarter. This is the biggest sand desert in the world. But don't get mistaken, not everything is sand here. Not far from the road, we saw some very colorful mountains and we decided to drive towards them.
We watch the sunset, prepare some dinner, and just let the experiences of the last days sink in. In the next episode, we finally cross the mountains of Abba and reach the Red Sea. Until then, enjoy the ride.